I'm Steve Rendell from Haynes Publishing. Uh, I'm looking after the Robot Wars Build Your Own Robot Manual and we're here on the set of Robot Wars in Scotland. Uh, we've asked a few of the competitors to give us an insight into what goes on behind the scenes and their experiences of building their own robots. Hi, so I'm Ian Thomas, I'm from Team Shock. This is our robot Aftershock. Um, I'm the main engineer and uh, Bank of Dad, my son William. He's the driver and the designer. Um, and yeah, we're in our second series of uh, Robot Wars with Aftershock. We made the final last year. Um, got a lot to do this series, but yeah, we're doing, <laughs> hopefully we'll be okay. So like many of the, um, the family teams that are here, and we get quite a few family members of, uh, in, in Robot Wars, we saw it on the TV when William was eight or nine. Um, we looked at it and, you know, blimey, could we build something like that? And it was in our wildest dreams, we were only average DIYers. So we, um, when he got to about four, about 12 I think it was, he, he carried on and carried on and there was a magazine called Real Robots and that inspired him to build a robot. We built a robot out of uh, Pepsi bottles and bicycle pumps and it, it was quite good fun, a couple of cordless drills. Um, and then we got into the small weights, the feather weights, uh, 13 kilos and I'd never had any ambition to get to the heavy weights. Uh, but he got to, to 15 and 16 and we could actually lift the robot together um, to get it in the car because they were 100 kilograms. Well, these are 110 now, but originally they were 100. So, um, yeah, that's what inspired us, just the, the magazines, the TV show. Um, I think the trickiest part of building a robot is agreeing on things. <laughs> He's, he has these designs and these fantastic creations and then I have to try and build it, you know, within our a shed so it's we've, we've got a little lathe a little mill um, but yeah you can't get too carried away so you know, that is keeping it down to a level where we can build it we can maintain it uh, and it's reliable that's the key things um, don't make it too complex really this is really a, a very simple robot it's, it's, it's very crude in many respects um, we're just running very cheap uh, scooter motors off of eBay. Um, you know, we spend a bit of time preparing them and mounting them. Um, the disc is powered by a big, big electric motor just here, but it's operated by a solenoid on and off. And no, uh, it's not overly burdened with technology. Uh, keep it simple. Um, when you build it, make sure you tighten everything up. Um, everything has to be shock mounted. Hot glue is fantastic. Uh, Aerodite's pretty good for repairs, but make it so that you can repair it. That's the simple thing. You're in this very hostile area, you're not at home, so you don't have the luxury of all your tools. Keep it simple, you can still be very, very effective with a simple robot. Um, oh, uh, it's the atmosphere. It's, um, we're lucky we've done three series now, and uh, it's, it's such a familiar and um, great environment to be in. We, we live this Robot Wars bubble for uh, four or five days a year, you know, or it's twice-ish uh, in the last six months. Um, yeah, being with like-minded people, it's a good family um, atmosphere, um, and getting them to be on TV, which is quite good fun. So we built this in a, a smaller weight class, in the featherweights, in 2000, uh, 2010. Um, exactly the same concept, but just at a much smaller scale, a tenth scale effectively. And um, we came third in the UK Championships. Uh, William built it himself, I told him it was never going to work, and he came third, so um, what did I know? So all we did was we, we, we upscaled it. Um, we have put four-wheel drive in, which is a slightly different change, but just the, the, uh, the inertia that this disc creates, the momentum is just horrendous. It's so powerful. 